Good evening and welcome back. It's Tuesday. How the time is going past so quickly. I hope that you're having a fantastic day. I must say that there's a special little man in my life that's not had a great day, but maybe I'll tell you about that a little bit later. But welcome back to Talk Tuesday. My name is Vanessa Mary and I'm a lifestyle coach for mums. And I have been working with mums and supporting mums. So my role is to support you to build your resilience. And how do I do this? Well, I'm looking at your physical health, your emotional well-being, and your mental health. And I also talk about spiritual things. Well, if you've been following this Talk Tuesday series, you will know that it's been inspired by the event that is coming up. I haven't even checked my countdown timer, so I don't know how many days we've got left, but the days are getting closer. So the event is Future Proof Your Family. It's happening on Wednesday the 28th and Thursday the 29th of September. Now, if you've been watching and following the updates that I've been posting, or maybe you're connected some of, to some of the guest contributors and you've been seeing some of their updates. The talks are ranging on, let's think, fertility and how you can boost and support your fertility. We're looking at how we can protect Mother Earth by what we're using in our home. We're looking at why you need to be aware of, it's called EMF, so it's the electrical magnetic frequencies. Hope that I've got that right, Marianne. We're talking about how you can bring more money into your life, so I'll tell you a bit more about that later or shortly. We're looking at, well, when you get the money, how can you grow it? You know, what kind of investment plans can you have? And also, what about when Unfortunately, as we know, death is a part of life. But what provisions are you making to make sure that your family are protected and you've left a legacy? I don't think I've missed anybody off. Do you know what I feel like? I have, I have. It's <laughs> how do we have a happy family? So before we die, let's be happy. <laughs> There's so much going on. That's why we're having it over two nights. But listen, tonight is, I would say, I'm kind of hoping it's going to be more of a spiritual conversation tonight. So I'm going to introduce you to one of our amazing guest contributors. Her name is Roberta. And do you know what? She's an author. So she's got a new book out. So I'm sure she'll be telling us about that. And she also specializes in supporting her clients with their relationships and she does NLP as well. So let's bring her on so she can tell us more about herself and her journey so far. Here we go. Hi, Roberta. Hello, Vanessa Mary. Thanks for your kind introduction. Thank you for being here. It's really so bad. great yeah. to have you on the live stream with me. Thank you. I've just realized I haven't done a sound check. Now, anybody who's been watching this live stream, you'll see that I kind of get a bit nervous because in the past I have done recordings and I've been chatting away thinking that everything was fine. We do have a viewer with us. So that's a good sign. Yes, it's telling me it's live there. Okay, so <laughs> if you were tuning in on the live and you wanting to leave us a comment, that would be great. And if you want your comments to appear on the live stream, you do need to let stream, StreamYard know that you uh, are giving StreamYard permission to, to view your comments. So welcome, Roberta. Thank How you. do I pronounce your name? I don't want to say it incorrectly. Yeah, Roberta is fine. I mean, oh, I'm your Italian. surname, your surname, sorry. Oh, my surname is Musato. Masato. I thought so, but I just thought I didn't want to mispronounce it. So welcome here, Roberta, onto the Talk Tuesday chat. And 
as I've just said, you know, you're joining us. I think you're going to be with us on Wednesday the 28th, if I remember the program properly. Indeed, I love yes. the talk title, but we'll tell them a bit more about the talk a bit later. But let's find out about you. Mm -hmm. um, I know that you've got a new book out. How amazing. Yes. I don't have my copy, which is, you know, I, guess I have, it, yeah. you have so, your copy. Yeah. Universe, I trust you. Oh, wow. One month in Sri Lanka. Yeah. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. Well, yeah, congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Um, I understand that this is your first title. Is that correct? It is, though it basically came out in Italian in December 2020. And then I translated it myself because I'm a linguist by background. And so I thought I want to do the translation myself. And it was really interesting to see how this book came out slightly different from the Italian one because there were a lot of cultural things that I had to adjust, especially in terms of sense of humor, because the Italian sense of humor is very different from the English one. And so, you know, I just made sure not to be constantly reported to the police with my jokes. So I had to tone down a few things and then, of course, culturally adapt some of the references that I make in my book to the English audience. So it was a very interesting process. So in a way, I say, it's actually the second book, even though it's still, in terms of content, it's the first one, but it was such a long journey to translate it and then edit it together with our mother tongue. It was a very interesting process uh, from a linguistic and cultural point of view. Well, lots of congratulations there. Firstly, congratulations for getting your book out and published. I noticed that you had a gathering, not sure whereabouts in the country, but you had a gathering yeah, you had your, yeah, yeah. your community holding the book. And yes. then yes, of course, congratulations for doing the translation, yeah. using the skills that you've already got there. And as you're saying this, it's so interesting because I know that when you change the um the language you change the thought so you're mm. already picking that up with when you said that you've ch toned down the um yeah the, i have to say know. it was a very interesting process for me as a linguist even though i don't particularly enjoy translating because i graduated as an interpreter so the translator would be the one translating written documents let's say but the interpreter is the one that translates orally verbally you know, like in a booth simultaneously. So that was my thing. I never particularly enjoyed sitting down and translating something that was already written because it would require a lot of thinking about each word. But because it was my book, of course, the whole experience was different. And uh, it was really intriguing to see how, of course, there are cultural references to Italian sayings or Italian movies that an English audience would have not understood. So in that case, I tried either to refer them to English cultural signposts. Um, but then there were also really jokes that in Italian are quite acceptable. And with England especially being as politically correct as it is, they might have not been, uh, uh, not have gone down well. And it's simply a diversity in how we joke. You know, that sense of humor is always very, very specific to a country. So. So yes, there was, so I actually hired a mother tongue uh, both to make my English flow better because anyway, it's not to a level of a native speaker, but also to really warn me about when I was entering into some dangerous territory uh, because of, you know, because of what I would normally say in Italian and that, you know, for an English speaking audience would be a more delicate topic. Okay, so this is fantastic, but I'm just, conscious that we haven't really got a sense of where you know where have you come from in the world you've mentioned <laughs> Italy so that's a bit of a clue yes so, so just yes. tell us a little bit about you know before you wrote the book <laughs> yeah yeah oh, yay. yeah so I was born in Treviso which is in the northeast of Italy near Venice and I came to London where I'm still living when I was 28 years old. So that was, you know, a few lifetime ago by now. Um, and I, when I arrived here, I just, you know, started working normally in companies that I realized that I loved being a self-employed. And so being a linguist by background, I started working as an interpreter 
specializing in English and Italian, subtitler, so writing subtitles for movies, TV series, and then voiceover artist, so giving my voice to audiobooks, um, TV commercials, radio commercials. And much as I loved my jobs, around four or five years ago, I started feeling that I wanted to do something else, that I wanted to help somehow. And my thing has always been communication. So I knew that the help I could provide would be through communication, but I didn't know exactly in what form. So that's when I was also living quite a generalized crisis um, on many fronts. Um, for example, I don't know, I had been single for eight years and it was one dating disasters after another. Plus, I think that in general, the late 30s are quite a delicate phase in life for so many women, um, especially if they would like to set up a family. And so I had started a solo fertility journey, which unfortunately was not successful. So I was also going through that pain. And then I didn't feel much understood by my friends. And I was also dealing with my best friend's addiction, which I discovered by chance. So there were really so many things that had just piled up. Plus the, this idea that I was supposed to do something different with my working life, but I didn't know exactly what. And so that's when I decided, you know what, I'm just, I just need to breathe. I just need to put some space between all this grayness and my life. And I was in the privileged position to be able to do it. And so I took my backpack, I took my journal, and I went backpacking on my own for three months. One month in Sri Lanka, one month in India, and one month in Nepal. And I decided to make an experiment because I reasoned if all my pain comes from unmet expectations. I thought that my life would be married with three children, uh, so completely different from how I was. How can life be when we don't have any expectations? When we just welcome everything, thinking that it's the best way in which it can show up? when we just don't have preset ideas and everything is fine. And so I made it a point not to plan a single thing for those three months and see how life would, would show up. And so universe, I trust you was my mantra. You know, every day I was like, okay, universe, I trust you. Make me meet the people that I need to meet. Uh, use me as an instrument to make situation happen. You know, um, you know, go with the flow and go with the soul. And it was such an amazing trip <laughs> that when I came back, I thought that, you know, people need to know what happens when you live in trust, when you surrender and you just really trust that, you know, there is a more like a wiser presence, a bigger, you know, call it God, call it universe, call it source, whatever you want. But, you know, like we are really guided and we are protected and loved. And so this was the main reason why I decided to write the book, even though afterwards other reasons came up. And following this, uh, this journey, which saw me so aligned with myself and with nature and with the universe, I got this space where intuition could really speak loudly. And that's when I had, I actually had a vision. I was, I discovered meditation in this trip. At the end of it, I signed for a Vipassana meditation retreat in Kathmandu. So 10 days of silent meditation retreat. By the way, probably until now, one of the most mind-blowing experiences that I've done. And on day eight, I had this vision. I saw NLP written on a wall, but I didn't know what it was. And so I thought, okay, let me wait until day 10 when they're gonna give us back the mobile to check and see what this NLP is. And when I saw it, I'm like, neuro-linguistic programming makes perfect sense. You know, having always studied languages and communication, being interested in psychology, it, it was bringing the two things together. So I was like, okay, I know what's gonna be my next step. And then when I came back to London, I got informed about, you know, how to qualify as an NLP practitioner. And that's also how I stumbled upon life coaching. I went to a free event here in London and two hours after sitting in front of the speaker, I was completely madly in love with the old coaching thing. And I said, okay, I found my, I found my next career. 
and it just happened so organically and by now I've been two years a life coach and NLP practitioner and I'm currently uh, studying at the Elementum Coaching Institute to get the Master Coach qualification. So this is more or less my, my journey. <clears throat> That's fascinating. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to go back a little bit. One of the things that I wanted to ask you is about any key lessons that came out for you when you were doing your trip. So you were asking mm -hmm. the universe for guidance. What are the yeah, there were so many things that I learned. I would say the first, the practical one is how little we need to be happy. You know, like 13 kilos in my backpack were all that I needed to just have these amazing experiences and feel connected. So that would be the first, the first one, like really all the material things that we think we need to, to be happy. I mean, it sounds like a cliche, but honestly, we don't need them. So that's one thing. The second one, well, I developed this unshakable belief that everything is always going to be all right for me. Like, and even when it doesn't seem so in that precise moment, if you are in trust, you know that at some point, eventually, what's happening will show itself. You will understand why that thing had to happen in order mm -hmm. for something bigger and greater to happen. Just an example of this, for example, is the cover of this book. So I changed my plans last minute because I was going with the flow, going with the soul. So I decided to stay one day longer in a place that I particularly liked. By doing that, I met this guy, this German artist who became my traveling buddy and who's you know, one of the main characters in the book. And so when then I decided to write the book, it, it seemed natural for me that he was going to be the one drawing the cover. And it's because of this cover that the Italian book got noticed by a publishing house, which then offered me a contract. Because initially I self-published on Amazon, and 10 days later I was contacted by a publishing house saying, the cover is so beautiful, please send us the, the book, we want to read it. And then they offered me the contract. So like two years later, I just saw, aha, uh -huh, that had to happen so that I got the, the contract on my book. Fantastic. So there's a beautiful story about unfolding and how mm -hmm. everything was always working out for you, even if you didn't know precisely yeah. Yeah. what the... Um, what the outcome was going to be it was yes. about that surrender so yes. i want to ask you about signs so you said that nlp came through to you yeah. for me i mean any of the audience that have been following my journey i talk about the fact that i am clear sentient i know that mm -hmm. and i also get a lot of numbers but at the mm -hmm. moment it is particularly one number that just like appears all the time to me in fact, I've just missed it because it's the number seven <laughs> okay. all the time. So, I mean, I don't study numerology mm -hmm. on a professional level. I just do it for fun. Mm -hmm. but is there any signs that come through to you? Or that well, came now that you talk, yeah. So first of all, um, well, the NLP thing, I would say it was more a vision because I just had this image without remotely thinking about it. I just got it. And in the book, I talk a lot about these signs or coincidences. And I say that coincidences do not exist. They are the famous synchronicities. And for me, they are like wings from God to tell you that you're on the right path. Because really, when you are aligning, and I love the word alignment. Alignment is when what you say and what you think and what you do are like perfectly aligned. And this space is so clean and so powerful that, you know, it's like, you know, I see the universe or God saying, keep going, you know, you're doing well because you're really following your soul. And there's nothing more powerful than a human being standing in their truth and fully expressing themselves. And so all these synchronicities that would happen um, for me were just a sign of, okay, keep going, I'm doing well. Now, I don't even remember, like, I know that I talk about them here and there often, but talking about numbers, for me, one number that recurs a lot is 1111. Like, if not daily, every two days I check, you know, the watch and it's 1111. And I just know that that's, you know, if we want to talk spiritual, that's one of the ways in which angels communicate with you, 
having like triple numbers you know of the same uh, figure mm -hmm. or even four in this case and 11 11 in particular stands for a big change uh, coming up so I, i'm definitely it's definitely been two years of huge change apart at a global level but also at a personal level so so i'm like yes the angels are right <laughs> yeah that's fantastic so let's move on now because the book's out. Um, obviously, you're doing a promotion for the English audience at the mm -hmm. moment. Yeah. But you've mentioned that you're taking another qualification with your coaching. But yes. is there anything that's you know coming out out after the book that you wanted to tell us about? Well, so the well, so what's interesting about the book? Um, First of all, I've created a free video series that can be claimed from my website, www.robertamossato.com. So it's uh, three videos where between five and eight minutes long, where I talk about trust and the four stages of consciousness. So when you perceive life as happening to you, mm. by you, through you, or as you and how everything you look at in life changes according to which stage you are in. Yeah. And of course, you know, when I say universe, I trust you, I was in this energy of trust. Yeah. When I perceive life as happening through me, like me just being an instrument, use me and, you know, universe, just use me and let's see what happens. Not opposing any resistance, any, again, you know, no attachment. And then there is one on expectations because that's the other big thing on the book. The fact that expectations always ruin it for you. They are the number one killer of joy in everything, especially in blooming relationships, right? When we start with expectations. And then abundance. I also talk about abundance. So this is a free video series. And then there is a package called Universe Let's Explore You. And it's three hours of content. This is a paid package. Three hours of content when I go more into these three topics. Plus, I also present journaling as a, a therapeutic tool because this book is my journal when I was traveling. Mm -hmm. So it's all uh, true, everything honest, authentic. Um, and then there is also attachment styles. So as a coach, I talk about attachment styles because of the man that I met during my trip because, you know, there's also some uh, flirting, saucy parts. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then fear of judgment because that was a big thing for me in writing such an honest and vulnerable book. Coming from a small village in Italy, given that the book came out in Italian, I really had to ponder long about how much I wanted to share and how I would have, if I was ready for the judgment and if I even cared. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, it's like video, six videos of 30 minutes each that can help so much, I think, to... Because, you know, that's so different. So whether you are into abundance or whether you want to know how not to have expectations or whether to reason about judgment and why really, you know, to discover that judgment ultimately doesn't say anything about you, but says everything about the judger and things like this. So there is this, this, this um, video series, Universe, Let's Explore You. And also, this is the book about the first month. One month in Sri Lanka is the uh, subtitle. And I've already started writing the second book, which is about the month in India. Oh, of course, because you said you went to India and Nepal. And exactly. I was going to say that. I mean, I've got a Nepalese uh, client mm. uh, for the nutrition support that I do. Mm -hmm. And I whenever that. I've actually been around it, unfortunately, we're not in the same city anymore because she moved to London. Mm. But when she was in Nottingham, she introduced me to some of the Nepalese community. I mean, oh, yeah. she was inviting me to other things and it was getting bigger and bigger. And I was so interested. And I really said to her, you know, I've really got to make that journey myself. Yeah. But one of the things that I wanted to come back to uh, was the topic of abundance, because obviously yeah. this is the focus for the event. Yeah. Now, from my perspective in terms of putting the event together mm -hmm. um as you know i've got rob who specializes in supporting families with investment strategies how can you expand the money that you've already got how can you make that grow and we've also got gary who's really supporting the legacy element mm -hmm. but i just thought well wait a minute we just have so much 
let's just say some people struggle and they don't really connect. It's how they're thinking about money and their whole vibration towards money. Um, mm. but they're not really letting it in. So mm. this is where, you know, for you, this is your um, contribution to mm. the event. So mm. did you want to tell us about the title and give us a flavor of what you would be talking about, please? Yeah, so the, the talk would be, uh, Mom, what's, abund what's abundance and how can we live in it? Because abundance is really a mindset, it's an energy. And it's not only related to money, because no. you know, if you talk about abundance, every person would imagine something different. Abundance of love, abundance of spare time, abundance yeah. of money, it can just be. So it has a different connotation for every person. And abundance is already available to us, first of all. So if we start, for example, with gratitude, we would already realize how much more we have than we initially think. So that's already an important component in feeling more abundant. Mm -hmm. And by being in a grateful state, positive, you are attracting more of it. Because we know that it's energy that once... So energy relates to the same energy, to the same frequencies. So mm -hmm. in order to get to the frequency of abundance, you have to be in the gratitude one and in the receiving one. Yeah. And we can help this by connecting daily through visualizations, through meditations, and again, through gratitude practices. And in, besides the positive um, aspects of feeling more abundant, there is also the negative ones of living in a scarcity mindset. And that's something that has always really hurt me because the scarcity mentality stops people so much. And in fact, I dedicate my book and my avatar client are women who feel stuck because that's how I was feeling. Stuck. And when you're stuck, most of the times it's because you think that, well, there's of course, there's a big component of fear, but you also think, oh my God, yeah, why should I leave this job? Because do I, what do I know if I'm going to find a better one? Oh, yes, this relationship is not great, but who tells me, you know, like that I'm going to find a better partner. So there is always a scarcity mindset behind. And once we work on our abundance, abundance mindset, so many things can change. And I've seen it happening uh, in myself. And that's why, especially around money, uh, even though my talk will not be specifically around about uh, around money and there are also some false myths to dispel you know like some people might feel guilty and wanting more but this is again starting from a scarcity mindset do you think that if you have more you're taking away from somebody else, else. yeah you know, everything is abundant so love money it's like air it's not that if i breathe i'm taking away air from you Mm -hmm. So there are, you know, some mindset shifts and um, and also spiritual outlook on abundance that I will bring on at the talk. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, we've got so much to look forward to from, you know, what we can learn from your story um, and the book. I'll be getting my copy of the book. You did offer me an e-copy, but I'm, sorry, <clears throat> I'm very traditional and I like to hold something in my hand yeah, and you too. know flick through and me too. you know if i'm traveling i like to you know books to travel with me yeah. so um it'll be good to actually have we'll that sort the paper copy don't worry yeah <laughs> thank you and also really explore this uh the front cover because it's lovely when there's actually meaning behind oh, different yeah. elements yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and by the way yeah and by the way the book will be sold at a discounted price both the paperback and the ebook at the event so for all those who are uh, upgrading to the vip uh well i think that in general for everybody who registers there is the chance to buy my book at a discounted price and um, yeah and it has been um compared to Eat, Pray and Love, to the Italian version of Eat, Pray and Love. And the similarities are quite easy to make because it's a woman in crisis <laughs> who decides to go traveling to three different countries with the difference that I stay only one month in each country and also that I do not compart compartmentalize. I eat, pray and love in each country. And the book came out during COVID in 2020 in Italy and I really made it a point to 
I, I saw my book as a contribution to lighten up yeah a terrible year it's a book that is very hilarious and so self-ironic so quite funny but at the same time moving and warm so you know there are there are many many um reviews on amazon that can say that like you know it doesn't of course i would tell you that my book is all these things but listen also to what the readers have to say and yeah so i made it a point to to have it published in COVID time because I wanted to help people travel with their mind and laugh in such a terrible year. So hopefully, even though we are past more or less those mm -hmm. times, there's still always a big, <laughs> there is still a big uh, need to to laugh and to to travel, to daydream and go to exotic places with your mind. Yeah, definitely. It's all about exp expansion. So Absolutely. I'm really, you know, looking forward to your contribution at the event because mm -hmm. ultimately future-proofing your family has to start with your mindset. I mean, for yeah. those who are registered to the event, they are the ones who are looking that little bit ahead. You know, we do need to live in the moment, as you said. We do need to give our gratitude, which is really important. But at the same time, you know, when you have other people that um, are part of your life, you're caring for them. For me, especially, you know, I've got different generations in my in my family. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking on different levels, you know, for the older one to the little one to my granddaughters. So mm -hmm. hopefully the mums and dads and grandparents that will be registered mm -hmm. can uh, appreciate that concept. So, Roberta. I'm going to let you go. If you just stay in the green room, we'll have a chat afterwards. But thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. For me. No problem. It's such a fascinating story. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that you said that uh, book one is based on the first part of your adventure. So at least you've got a way of getting people involved in your story. Yeah. Um, like, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, when I decided to write it, I wanted to write about the whole journey. But mm. I'm a person who loves details, and I had written 300 pages only about the first month. And so then I reasoned, um, who wants to read like 1,000 pages from <laughs> a known author? So let's yeah. stop here. My message will pass through anyway. And um, and it's only you know the Italian readers that then ask me, oh, we have to know what happens in India. You cannot leave us like this. And I'm so sorry. you know, I didn't start with the idea of writing also the second book, but. It's been requested, and so I will comply <laughs> with the request. Well, final quick question. Obviously, the book's about universe, I trust you. You know, it'd be silly of me not to take this opportunity to ask you, how do you work with the energy on a day-to-day -day basis and still live in that, you know, moment of surrender and trust? Well, to be honest, by now, it's become sort of a default attitude. So I still meditate and take my time to, you know, especially as a life coach, I, I get exposed to many things energetically from my clients. So I do kind of um, purification exercises in between sessions just to get rid, also because I'm an empath. So I tend to absorb a yeah. lot of other people's energy. So I just have like some visualization exercises. But in terms of trust on trusting the universe, that's really by now automatic. Like I don't need to remind myself. And sometimes I tell myself the sentence, okay, universe, I trust you. So I say it loud, uh, but it's more like an inner joke uh, with myself than, than anything else. So yes, I, I would say that by now it's really so rooted in me that I, I don't need to do any, any specific procedure to, to remember it. Yeah, it's a mindset as well. It's part yeah. of your mindset in your life. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Like I said, stay in the green Pleasure. room. I would just wrap up the call and okay. we'll have a chat in a minute. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Wow, what a fascinating story. Gosh, I can't wait to get my hands on that book now. But yeah, listen, I really hope that, you know, you've tuned in to this message. And if you've been able to watch the series that been that's been put together so far you've heard from six of our speakers so we have Gary who will be coming on a chat um, in the next few weeks and yeah it's one of these how can I say you know 
this event, if you are registered for the event, you will automatically get a copy of the recording after the event. So the information that we're sharing with you, yes, we appreciate that you've got a lot going on. You may be busy with your family, but you are going to hear so many nuggets of, I call them gold, because even for me, when I spend time with those who have specialist knowledge, I always like to listen again, because when I'm maybe doing a chat or interviewing somebody, I'm, at, you know, trying to listen to them in that moment and ask appropriate questions. But I like to go back and really take on that knowledge and see how I can apply it in my life. So what we are offering you is going to be practical uh, tips and information that you can bring into your life. And the aim of it is to support you and your family to flourish in the future. So we look forward to seeing you registered. The link will be below this video, wherever you are listening and watching the video. And we can't wait to see you on the call. So thank you for tuning in. There's not actually going to be so, uh, Talk Tuesday next week live because I'm going to be in London. So I might just do a, a quick live from London, but I won't have a guest speaker with me next week. So tune in for the week after and we will speak to Gary and he will tell us more about what he's doing. All right then. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.